Well, hello and welcome to another Friday Night Live. I am Apostle Daryl Johnson. So glad to be with you again. And I am joined by... Hi, everyone. This is Pastor Tammy. I'm so glad to be on with you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Friday Night Live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on the Friday Night Live page. Thank you for joining us. Take your devices out right now. You have your phone, your pad, whatever you're using to watch us on. Please make sure that you are sharing with someone on tonight. Thank you for watching God's Girl. Glad to see you on tonight. So make sure everyone else knows God's Girl that Friday Night Live is on. Uh, we are glad for you to be here. Um, you, you guys know us. Friday night, we're right here on winning on Wednesday. We are in Winning Wednesday Bible study on the Winning in Prayer page at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It will be myself, Apostle, and our partners on at that time. And then we have a new programming that is coming on the that is coming March 7th, which is next Tuesday. Um, it is Tuesday night transformation. We got four brand new speakers that will be coming on our first uh, Tuesday. Uh, remind me, Apostle, the order of uh, speakers. Pastor He's coming Sean on Tuesday. Wilson Clax. Am I saying that right? Yes. Yeah. Pastor Sean will be on on Tuesday, March 7th at 8 p.m. on the Winning yeah. in Prayer page. It is Tuesday night transformation. Come Amen. and be transformed Amen. by the word of God, by the woman of God that's speaking. You will enjoy it. Um, we'll, be, we'll beat you there on Tuesday night. Again, join us every Friday night right here on the Friday Night Live page. Tonight, we are in Proverbs 14. Verse 19, this is the fourth part of Proverbs 14. We seem to get, um, you know, uh, get to going and then stop and get to going. So tonight we are in 19. Get your Bibles, get your paper, get your pens, and let's go. I'm ready to go, Apostle, when you are. All right, so verse 19, it says that the evil bow before the good and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I just want to focus on that part of the uh, verse where it's talking about the gates, because when you look at, uh, in the Bible and you uh, see the word gates, gates were uh, a part of uh, the protection of a city against invaders. And it's all, it also was the part of the city where it, it was the central activity for the city. It's where business transactions were done. It's where... Uh, uh, they held court. Um, they also had, uh, they, they made their public announcements at yes. the gates. Why? Because this was where a large number of people could be found at any one given time. So right. you see in the book of Proverbs, you know, uh, it always talks about wisdom crying out at the gate. So wisdom was crying out at the gate because that's where a large number of people could be reached mm -hmm. at any any given time. You know, uh, the Bible even speaks of sitting at the gate. And in Proverbs 1 and 20 and 21, it says wisdom cries at the gate. So it wants to maximize the number of people that is going to hear what's being said. Now, in looking at this, this, this uh, gate's, um, my mind just began to run, and in Genesis 22, you'll find uh, that an Abrahamic uh, uh, promise uh, uh, that said that the, that his offspring will possess the gates of their enemies. So mm. I am meant to to possess the gates of my enemy. You are meant to Thank possess you, the gates of your enemies. We are meant to dominate. On all fronts, we are not meant to be wimps. We are meant to dominate. We have a promise over our lives that we are supposed Hallelujah. to possess the gates, the most important part. We are supposed to possess the gates of our enemies. Also in Matthew 16, it says uh, that God, God's promise was that the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against me Man. or the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against the church. I'm a part of the church, so that that promise extends to me again. 
I am, I am supposed to dominate. I should not be worried about what the enemy is saying. I should not be worried about My what Lord. the enemy is doing because God has already declared, he has already decreed that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And so that's My something Lord. to be excited about on tonight. And so in preparing for tonight, I got excited from the first verse looking at that word gates because I, I, my mind just began to take off and Thank run you, all the things that the gates mean uh, for us, even in these times. I'm meant to dominate. Man, so the gates is the gate or the gates is the beginning. So the word says, guard, guard your heart and your mind. That's the beginning where the enemy starts using or starts wanting to beat you up. So we're supposed to guard our hearts and our minds, guard those gates. Um, the, like you said, in the Old Testament, that's where the happenings would be. Is at mm -hmm. the gate, is at the mm -hmm. beginning. That's where Rahab met the spies. She was at the beginning um, and she was able to help them at the beginning. That's where the prophets would sit at most times and, and, prof and be prophetic with mm -hmm. the people at the gates so everything starts at the beginning at the gates so your heart and your mind the word says guard your heart and your mind that's what you need to do because that's the gate that's the beginning of where the enemy will try to defeat you is in those areas so guard your heart and your mind at the gates don't let the enemy come in those gates yeah, the, you know, when you think about it, even now, you know, if you have a fence with, you know, a gate uh, uh, around your house, it's it's meant to uh, allow someone in or allow someone to exit. And so mm -hmm. literally, literally, the Bible, again, it says that I'm supposed to possess the gates of the Abrahamic uh, promise was that I will possess the gates of my enemies. Mm. So. I, you know, so the most important part, that part where Jesus. something is coming and going, you know, transactions, business transactions, yes. uh, spiritual transactions, generational transactions, I'm supposed to possess that important part because mm. that's 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 where that's where my elevation is going to happen that yes. that's where that's where uh uh, Thank uh you, God. transformation happened that's that's where uh uh that's that's that place that you you have to guard that place because so much is going on right there mm -hmm. but i love mm -hmm. it that i have a promise that i'm not i'm not going to be sitting on the outside but i'm Man. going but i'm going to possess the gates of my enemy. You know what? When you when you really begin to consider uh, everything that, that the gates have to offer, even in our day now, you know, this is a different level of knowing, abiding, uh, positioning, and, and even a even a different kind of perspective. Because mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of times we're not we're not so convinced about what the gates have to offer. Listen, the My Bible Lord. says that uh, in 1 John, it says that he's, he's, he wants the, the propitiation of our sins. He was the propitiation mm -hmm. of our sins. Now, that means that he paid for my sins. He paid for right. your sins. He paid for our sins. And again, uh, this is a different level of knowing, abiding, positioning, and perspective. When I am convinced mm. that he has already paid for my sins i don't have to continue paying for my sin thank <laughs> you god i don't have to carry the weight i don't have to carry the shame i don't i don't i don't have to carry the guilt i don't have to carry the condemnation bottom line i don't have to continue paying for what already has been paid for Mm -hmm. A different level of knowing, a different level of abiding, a different level of, pos of positioning, and a different level of perspective. I am somebody. I am somebody in the kingdom. I am Man. somebody in Christ. Man. And I am meant to possess the gates of my enemy on tonight. <laughs> Man. In my um in my version, it says controlling the gate of a city meant controlling the city. So if yes. you have control over your gate, 
If you have yes. control of what comes in and out, if you yeah. have control of your thoughts and your minds and your heart and what enters and what doesn't, then you have control of what goes on in your walk with Christ. So mm -hmm. you cannot let anything in that's going to distract you or take you away. You, you right. cannot um, be bothered with uh, things that really, uh, what they say, mind your own business, mind your own business. Mm -hmm. When you're mm -hmm. in this walk, if it doesn't have anything to do with you, then you need to mind your own business so you can control what comes in and out of um, your gates. And um, I had a scripture to go with this, and I'm going to get it real quick. Um Hold on just a minute. But yeah, as we're as we are walking through uh Proverbs, picking, picking up, up some wisdom, reason. we're just not teaching the word of God and not getting anything from it. We are picking up some wisdom on um on during this time. So Romans 7 and 23, it basically talks about allowing um sin to distract you away from your walk and it says in my members i feel this sin coming up um so what do i do when i feel this coming in my gates what do i do when it's trying to war and push itself in and you know in war times they would try to uh, uh knock the walls down that was their first line that's their first line of defense they were built so high and so thick and they would try to knock the walls down so this scripture talks about sin trying to interrupt my members trying to come in and sneak in the same way that we're talking about these gates that's what's happening with sin it kind of leaks in it tries to get in and we got to be very careful about how we are conducting ourselves on a daily basis so our gates are not interrupted or trying someone else or something is trying to control it we yeah. have to be the ones in control yeah and you, and you, you know Mark. you know i like it because you know they didn't just allow anybody at the gate correct you know it wasn't you, they didn't have they didn't have any wimps at the gate but they have they, yeah. they had they had men men that 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 were uh uh they had men at the gate that could make a difference correct oh, yeah. Soldiers. the men yeah. that were at the gate could make a difference they weren't so, fearful exactly yeah 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 they weren't gonna run take off and run you know mm -hmm. they they weren't wimps in the you know praying and they weren't whips in the spirit See, and, and that's what it that's what nah, it really it. boils down to on tonight is the gates of your life. You mm. have to guard those gates through prayer, uh, through through the practice of the word, Thank you, even through fasting, because the Bible lets us know that a threefold cord is hard to uh to break, but mm -hmm. you are in control of what enters and exits your life. Nice. What, what what you know you're you are going to determine what what has access yes and what is 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 uh dispelled from your life you're yes. in total control and i remind you again of what the abrahamic uh promise was is that i will possess the gates of my enemy i am meant to dominate mm. i'm not i'm not just meant to have Thank a social kind of uh uh life i am mm -hmm. meant to dominate mm -hmm. and not and not just in not just in my area where my gates i'm meant to go into the enemy's camp and dominate i am supposed to be Thank able to God. dominate his his gates to possess yes. his gates glory to god thank you lord so possessing gates uh, again, reason, it's for a some control. Reason, babe, your your screen is is buffering, and I've never seen it do that. Um, I'm, on my side, I'm okay. not. You're fine now. You're fine now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go, go um, right in. Go right in. I would say, in the in, even in um even when the gates, uh, you were talking about the people that guard the gates in the Bible yeah. in the biblical days. So important. Um, it is, they were not whips. They were not scared. They were men that mm -hmm. were not fearful. Um, they were ready to battle at any moment. Whoever would come and try to um, attack the wall. Um, they were the people that first recognized everybody that came in. If they didn't know you, they were the first people to say, hey, I don't know you. 
You don't look like right. us. Where'd you come right. from? I'm reminded of Nina uh, when Jonah was in Nineveh. He was walk. He walked through the gates after all of his disobedience, and the man approached him. He said, "I've never seen you before. Who are you? Yeah. You don't yeah. dress like us. You don't look like us." And they're the people that was checking at the gate. So if you didn't check through the gate, if you didn't check out with them, then they're gonna put you right back out, and you'll have to stand outside and watch your friends go in, watch whoever right. you're with go in because they didn't want any strange. They were protecting the city. And it's the same thing with us. This mind and this heart, we oh, have my. to protect. We mm -hmm. have to be able to know, hey, nope, that person's not good for me. That what I'm reading is not good. That what I'm hearing is not good. Um, those situations, those atmospheres are not good. I won't let it in. And so I'm going to kick it out. And it has no a reason to live here or abide in my heart and my mind and my spirit. It, it has to be kicked out. It has to be evicted. And so, like I said, when they didn't recognize you, they didn't let you in the gate because they didn't know what you were bringing with it with you. You could have been bringing other folks. You, you could have been coming in there to spy, bring somebody back and take everything they had or whatever. They said, nope, you can't come in here because I don't recognize you. And that's the same right. thing that we have to do in our lives with people, places and things and what we hear and what we see. Nope, you can't reign here. Nope, you can't come in here. Nope, I cannot have you um, riding along with me. You have to be out. You have to evict the enemy when he's trying to buck against that wall or mm. try to kick against that wall and discourage you. You have to say, no, enemy, you don't have no place here. I have mm. victory over this gate. I have victory mm. in my life. And we got to encourage. David encouraged himself. And just as he encouraged himself, we have to do the same thing because Pastor Pastor not, may not be around, bishop may not be around, your mother, your daddy, whoever right. you call you, uh, yo, get through a uh, prayer partner may not be around. We have to just, we have to get to the place where, no, you don't belong in this city. You don't belong in my life and you have to get out. You don't live here. I don't want your stuff. Take your stuff and go. And we have to make sure on a daily basis that we are checking the entrances of our hearts, the gates of our hearts and minds. That's what that that's that's where we can um, that's where we gain victory when we start watching and um, knowing those things that have entered and you want to evict them. That's how we win. That's how we get victory. Yeah. Thank verse 20, you. verse 20. Let's move on to verse 20. It says the poor, the poor is hated even of his own neighbor. Let me read it to you again. The poor is hated mm -hmm. even of his own neighbor, but the rich hath many friends. So this verse lets us know that. You know, for the most part, you're going to have to deal with tough times on mm -hmm. your own. You're mm -hmm. going to have to deal with tough times uh, uh, most of the time alone. Uh, no one, even so-called friends, want to want to be attached uh, to tough times. That's what mm. the scripture helps us understand, especially especially, especially when you're broke. Now, mm -hmm. you have friends that want to be around when you when you have it, and, mm -hmm. and, and 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 you can you know you can splurge, but the moment but the moment your resources dry up, those so called mm -hmm. friends you know they're nowhere to be found. Proverbs yes. seventeen seventeen says that a friend loveth at all time, at and all a brother time. is born for a time of adversity, even when you're broke. Mm -hmm. If they're a real friend, they're going to be your friend. Even while you're broke, even while yes. you're dealing with tough times, even while you're dealing with a situation that may, not, that may not be the most attractive situation. Proverbs 19 and 4 says that wealth maketh many friends, uh, but the poor, the poor is, is, is separates. It separates. Mm. There's something. It's something about tough times and and no money that make people not want to be around. It makes you so. <laughs> exactly. It's amazing how unattractive you become. Yes. Uh, in Ecclesiastes nine sixteen, um, it says uh, that the the what is it? The words of a fool are are uh, despised. So uh, of the poor are despised. So. So not only are are you despised, but they don't even want to hear what you got to say when you poor. Right. When right. you're dealing with tough times, they don't, they don't want to. They don't want to deal with you, and they don't want to mm -hmm. hear nothing you got to say. My God. So being being in relationship with people like that, um, 
you got to know where they're coming from at all times. You got to be watching them at all times. If you don't have, you know they're not around. But as soon as you get, here they are. They're calling you, texting you. I know, you, I know some you. people like that. I do too. And so they come to your home. They pass by. But you don't hear from them when you don't have nothing. You don't hear nothing. from them uh, when your resources are all gone or you won't, you fall on hard times. Now, right. they don't know how to reciprocate. They don't know how to say, you know what? Well, when I didn't have, you gave. Um, so those, again, are not the friends that you want to have in your gates, um, in your in your life, because they have decided, you know, well, she's not good enough to be around or he's not good enough to be around when they don't, when they have, when they don't have. So uh -huh. I'm going to not, uh, I'm going to be inconsistent in my friendship. Uh, there's no reciprocation. Um, so they don't, you take care of them, but they don't take care of you. So it's not um, the, the, I don't want to use the Christian way. It's not the saintly way to be. Uh, so when your brother right. is burdened, you should be on, you should be taking over that burden also. As the word says, we should carry yes. each other's burdens. We should yes. be able to be in relationship, whether it's going good or bad. Um, and you know, when we, uh, when we follow out of relationship with people we want everybody else to fall out in relationship with them and that's a poor right. attitude to have um when you are in when you call yourself saved and just because somebody else doesn't like that person then you don't either um so you got to make sure again we talk about gates who's in your gates who's in your life that you're choosing um that they would not want to be around you when you don't have um they just right. want to be around you when you have you know you need to really pay attention to people's uh motives and watch uh -huh. them um you you know, yeah. we're not sometimes we don't want to face the fact um, sometimes sure. when those people are sure. um, been in our lives for so long. Um, but mm -hmm. we don't we don't face it until, you know, maybe we get older or maybe a really serious situation comes about and they're not there for us. Um, but you have to you really do need to watch who you call your friend or your neighbor. If they're not reciprocating, mm -hmm. then that means that we need to be moving on to another relationship or moving out of that relationship. Yeah, yeah, because a, because a real a real friend is going to be there, you know, when it's the sun is shining, when it's raining, or it can be it can be snowing, the wind can be blowing, just like your like your childhood friend, like y'all don't talk, your childhood best friend, like y'all don't talk every day, but when y'all talk, it's like y'all have had just talked yesterday. Now, right. if you were to call her right now and say I'm in need, what's going to happen? She would be there for me just like I would be there for her. That's exactly that's, how that would happen. That's what a friend is for. A friend's not going to shun you when things get thick. Right. But this verse lets us know, this verse lets us know that that person that we call a friend ain't always a friend if they're not going to stick stick through the ugly times. Yes. A friend is not a friend if, if they're only there during those times of being up, as we say. Correct. Them up. Up, 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 yeah. That's that's <laughs> not just the free when they when they're there for you know those times of being up. <laughs> right. So we're in Proverbs fourteen, verse twenty. Thank you uh, for joining us, uh, Elder Lorraine. Thank you for being on tonight. Um, you know, with your friends, you choose your friends. With your family, you don't. So, you know, you can't choose your family. So with friends, you're choosing them. So you can choose the right friend and be in the right relationship with them so that they can reciprocate and be and stick in there with you no matter what. Um, right. It says, uh, like you read, friend, uh, a friend is, can be closer than a brother because, you know, your own brother, sister, uncle, mother might say, oh, no, nope, I'm not fooling with them right now. I'm not right. doing that no more. Um, they're getting on my nerves, so I'm going to leave them alone. But a friend um, sticks closer than a brother that means no matter what you have or don't have or what you're going through they're right there mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. thank you god so, thank you Lord. so we're we're on verse 22 21. so you take ver verse 22 okay do um verse 22 do they not go astray who devise evil but mercy and truth belong to those who devise good do they not go astray who devise evil um <clears throat> It, when we're talking about evil, we're not just talking about sin. We're talking about actions. This is talking about act, um, people that have evil actions, um, people that do uh, things 
uh, just to be nasty um, and they're not nice at all. We're not just talking about, again, mm -hmm. sin. We're talking about their actions. It says, do they not go astray who devise evil? Is there any good that comes to anyone that is evil? Is there anything that can happen with them um, that is good? And, and we can answer no. We can see, you know, the villains on T on uh Oh, and the Marvel comics and, you know, the Marvel movies and things like that, they're evil. So nothing ever comes uh, good to them. They always um, end up either dead or hurt or disappeared or, you know, no one wants to be bothered with them. They're shunned. Right. Um, so when you are a person that devises evil, it says de devise, devise meaning action, the action of evil. You put a plan together to be right. evil, then that means you are a person that um, that is that is in sin. You are a person that is not saved. You are a person that does not know how to show grace or mercy to others. You do not uh, dwell in truth. You are a person that looks to do evil, the actions of evil. It says, but mercy and truth belong to those who devise good. We put the plan. If you're walking in Christ on tonight and you're, you're, you devise good, your plan is to do good. Your plan is to treat your neighbor, your brother, your friend uh, correctly. You're not devising a plan or putting a plan together to trip them up or to uh, push them into sin or you be a stumbling block you are giving grace and truth at that moment. You are that person that they're looking to, um, to overcome or to get through, but you cannot devise a plan to do evil and think you're going to get away with it. That's not going to work. So, so I want you to pay attention to, to something in this verse. This verse has that word devise in it twice. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. says, do not they err that devise evil. But devise. mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. Now, that word devise means to conceive, to imagine, or to plot. To mm. conceive, to imagine, or to plot. So, so literally, uh, now this verse, this verse, you can look at it in a myriad of ways, but but what I want to I want to focus in on something on tonight, because I feel like I may be talking to somebody. For that person that you know in your life that just can't seem to get it together, they mm. may be conceiving, imagining, and plotting another day. Mm. My it, God. Just hasn't, it just hasn't shown up yet. And you, you're looking and saying, why do they continue doing the same thing over and over and over? Well, mm. you know, a lot of times before change happens, I have to I have to have it on the I have to play it out on the canvas of my, of my imagination. Mm. My strength, I may not be strong enough yet to walk out. Mm. But but I'm conceiving, I'm imagining, oh, I'm, my God. I'm devising another day. I shut mm. up about Thank you. I'm God. devising another day. Thank you, that, Lord. That I'll be able to walk away from that situation. My I'll be God. able to walk away from that bad relationship. I'll be able My to Lord. walk away from that abusive relationship. I'll be mm. able to walk away from drug and alcohol addi addiction. Thank I'm conceiving. God. Glory to God. I'm Thank imagining. I'm, a pl I'm plotting another day. Another day. So just because the strength hasn't shown up just yet. Mm. Just because uh, 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 the victory hasn't shown up in its totality, glory to God. You better hear me on tonight. Thank I'm you, conceiving God. my Shande, I'm conceiving, I'm, 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 I'm imagining, and my I am God. another day that my victory God. is going to show up in its totality. Glory mm. to God. So I want you to I want you to understand me on the, don't give up on that one that's still wallowing in the mud. My don't give Lord. up on that one who can't understand why they keep doing the same old thing. And maybe it's been years, but they're mm. conceiving, they're imagining, they're plotting for a new day. Oh, yes. God. Thank Jump you, God. Jump Thank you, God. In. Thank you, God. So uh, with, the, with, with planning, you said they're planning for another day. So that's hope. Yeah. 
That's yeah. what it does. It's giving them hope to believe that I can, I'm going to come out of this. They're planting this. We're planting the seed of hope on tonight Glory. with even talking Glory. about this verse right here. You're devising a plan um, and you are you have hope in your um, in your body and you thinking it in your mind, even while you're high, even while you're drunk, mm. even while you uh, sit and while you're lying, even uh, while you're uh, doing it. things you're not supposed to do when you uh, smoking that uh, that joint and uh, what Mary Jane, as the old mm. folks used to call it, and Reefa, you, when you're devising a plan, I'm going to do better tomorrow. I'm going to do better even after mm. I get done with this. I'm going to do better when I, when I put this down. I'm going to do better when I stop lying. That's hope. That's something in their mm. mind and in, in their bodies that's telling them. Oh, and you know what oh, that is? Oh. If they have any, have had any touch with God, if they've even uh, been in the presence of God, that is his spirit urging them and pushing them to a better, to something better. That's just not them. Mm. But you know, when you're addicted to something and it don't just, it don't have to be just drugs. It can be food. It could be uh, uh, shopping. It could be anything that you can think you can't live without. And there's something urging you saying to do better. Mm. You can do better. That's hope. And that's the Holy Ghost. That's the spirit of God saying, yes, you are going to do better. You can do better. It's not not our job to give up it's not our job to say hey you gotta hurry up and come out of this when you go come out of it it is not our timing it is god's timing but they are continually believe me even though they're doing what they're doing there is hope in them i'm gonna do better they're devising a plan to do better they're devising to be good they're devising that i'm going to face and see god uh one day so we as uh mm -hmm. people of god and as the kingdom we can't give up it's not our job to say you know what I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. Uh, we have to keep going. We have to keep showing the love of God. We talked about last week by showing the love of God um, mm -hmm. to that person and not just giving up on them or the people or groups of people or whatever, but we they are always devising a plan to do better. They're always devising a plan in their mind that mm -hmm. I am going to do better. I don't want to do evil. I'm going to be good. I'm going to do good. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know, when 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 the Bible has Hallelujah. when the Bible Thank repeats you. itself, it's important and it's meant and it's meant for you not to miss it. Miss it. And again, yeah. that word devise is in there twice. So it's meant for you not to miss it. You know, yes. you know, uh, uh Ecclesiastes let us know that there is a time for everything. Man. So so there's a time for you to be down. Uh, there may be a time for you to be sad. There may be a time for you to be sad, uh, uh, happy, but there's a oh, time yeah. uh, 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 for my deliverance. There's a time for my healing, and, mm. and it, it may not be showing up the way you think it should. But I want I want yeah, to encourage like you tonight. Yes. They may have been wallowing in the mud for years. They can't keep their word. They keep lying. They keep saying mm. I'm gonna do better, but you don't give up on them tonight because they're conceiving, they're imagining, they're applying Hallelujah. for a They shoot. They might be shooting up right now, but they are yes. conceiving. They are imagining, they are plotting for another day. They may be high as a kite right now, but yes. they are conceiving, they are imagining, and they are plotting a new day. The thing, the challenge is for you is to not give up because God hasn't given up on any of us. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs 22 and 31 says, the horse is prepared for the day of battle. They get ready yes. for the day, they devise a get the yes. horse ready but deliverance is of the lord so mm. you can divide you can talk to them all about you can talk to them about god you can talk to them about scripture you plant in the seed you getting them ready you giving them a plan but the deliverance uh -huh. is of the lord you are not uh, no matter how much you want to push and pry and you know uh, sit them down in church and keep them chained to the altar the deliverance is of the Lord. It is not up to us when he does it, but we know that he can do it and he will do it. Mm. Hallelujah. We don't, Thank you, we don't, we don't, want, a, we you, don't want a superficial deliverance. We don't Correct. want a, a half want done deliverance. deliverance. Yes. So we have to leave the time. The timing is of the Lord. Yes. And so we have to be patient enough and Thank trust God. enough that when the Lord do it in his timing, that it will be done. And if Thank God you. does it, it is done. We can't, we can't, they can't come out according to my time. Yes. 
I, and yes. I know it's embarrassing. I, I know, I know you don't like folks talking about, but Glory, you, want, you want it to be done according to God's timing. Yes, the deliverance it, is it's of, of the Lord. Lord. Yes. The timing Hallelujah. of it is of the Lord. Yes. The deliverance happens when God says so. Mm, the healing is when God says so. The wholeness happens when God says so. Mm, the bringing out happens God. when God says so. Glory thank God. you, God. So Hallelujah. when you do people pleasing deliverance, it does not, you don't stay, you don't maintain mm -hmm. in that people pleasing deliverance. When you feel when you feel like I gotta do it because my my brother or my sister or my mother or my you know nieces and nephews are watching me, so I gotta do it for them. Um, but if you do it with the deliverance of the Lord, if you let the Lord deliver you, then you can maintain, you can stay. I'm sure there's people on here right now that can witness that I let the Lord. Lord deliver me. I let him do his work and I've maintained and I've stayed and I've not gotten off track. Uh, sometimes I may get discouraged, but I haven't said I'm giving up. I'm going back. So you cannot do a people pleasing deliverance. You can't please folks uh, with those uh, yes, Lord and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If yeah. it's not the Lord delivering you, then he, that person is not going to be able to maintain their walk. You'll see them back out and backslidden and then you'll have to help them come back in and devise a plan. But if you let the Lord right. uh, do right. the deliverance, if you let him do the work, then it can be done. And it will be done. Hallelujah. Thank yes. you, God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you want to move on to verse 23? Yes. Okay. Verse 23 says, the heart of the wise teacheth, teacheth his mouth and add Oh wait a minute! I'm reading the wrong verse. I'm sorry. I didn't got all. I got got exciting. I'm, I was, I'm over um, another. Yeah, I was looking like what verse you want? Uh, <laughs> and it says, "In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury." Now that word penury means extreme, uh, extreme poverty. Yes, uh, penury means extreme poverty. So that verse really just lets us know that you can't talk about it. You got to be about it. And we know a whole we know a whole lot of folks that like to talk, uh, be Mr. Me Too's and all of that. But if but this verse really lets us know that you can't just be talking. You got to have some action behind what you're saying. Or in other words, other words, your talking, your boasting, your bragging is going to lead to extreme poverty because you all, all you're doing is spending time talking. And while mm -hmm. you're talking, life mm -hmm. is passing by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't just mm -hmm. talk about it. You got to be about it. Like spinning your wheels in the mud, you're just talking yeah. to me talking. Yeah. Just hear yourself talk. So it's profitable uh, for a man to speak out of wisdom as the word as, talk, as we're reading in Proverbs. It's profitable for a man to speak out of wisdom. You gain something yeah. from that. People gain something from that. Um, yeah. When it's when you are full of wisdom and you're giving wisdom, it's profitable out of the man's mouth that you're hearing mm -hmm. it from. But if you're just talking and there's no backup behind it, and nobody's seeing you flourishing, nobody sees the fruit, then you're just really wasting your time. And you're just uh, just putting out energy that you're going to uh, not regain. You're just putting out the energy and you're going to be tired. Um, you're going to be uh, what, less, uh, uh, what I want to say, less strengthened. It's, it leads to poverty. And uh, mine says idle ch chatter leads only to poverty. It means you don't have yeah. nothing to give. Yeah. You don't have anything to give. You talk so much and you have don't have anything to give. Yeah, there's no action behind what you're saying. And we know a whole, I, you know, I, I, I've, I've known quite a few people over the years that uh, could, could, could talk very well, but didn't have the back, the, 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 the mm -hmm. necessary actions behind what they were saying. So, yes. so it really came to a point where you didn't want to hear what they had to say no more because you knew they're only talking. I always mm -hmm. had a plan. I always had grand plans, but oh, no wow. actions. No actions in place to make those grand plans uh, a reality. I want. Well, I want to do this. I want to do that. I, I want to have this. I want to have that. But nothing. No. No strategy. No plan. Nothing in place to actually make it happen. Just talking, like you yes. said. Idle. Idle words. Idle yes. words. Idle words don't mean it. Don't mean a thing because there's no yes. action attached to them. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Um, verse, we'll go to verse 24. Hallelujah. Yes, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Verse 24, the crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. The crown of the wise, the crown, um, your character, 
who you are, what you look like, what you act like is your crown. Mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. don't have to brag on yourself. Other people will brag about who you are. Uh, the crown is riches. It's not just money, not material things, but it's because people um, want to hear you when they when you speak things happen when you speak into other people's lives um it gain they gain rich um wisdom they gain rich counseling they gain rich right. instructions things they've never heard before um and they begin to grow and mature in themselves so the crown of the wise is their riches that's what they're known by a wise person um you can is known by that she's very wise oh yeah go talk to a sister so and so or brother so and so or pastor so and so that is their crown um and that when when you wear a crown, when you're a royalty, that shows who you are, what place you hold in the kingdom. So right. when you have crown of the wise, this is showing you what place you hold in the kingdom and in people's thoughts. It says, but the foolishness of the fools is folly. So we, we talk about the, uh, the person that is... Um, that deals in folly they're always doing something silly always doing silly things it says foolishness things that don't amount to anything right. uh things that uh do not um help people grow or mature uh you know you hear people say get away with me get away from me with all that foolishness all that crazy right. talking all that stuff that doesn't amount to anything that's not going to help me strive that's not going to help me get where i need to be you're just playing around you're just trying to be funny right now so the foolishness of the fo uh, fool is folly they're silly they're people that again we talk about them they're people that don't have boundaries they're people that might say any and everything just to get a laugh or just to get a kick or degrade others so we want to wear the crown of the wise we want to be the uh the ones that people know about and see in the kingdom thank you god yeah, yeah oh, i do want to so, say so, i want to so, shout so. out shout out somebody um we have krishanda krishanda johnson watching us on tonight so thank you for watching us on tonight that is our uh niece and thank you thank you thank you for watching um and liking and you shared the video so appreciate it go ahead oh Oh, shoot. I feel like I'm somebody now. Well, yeah. I, I, it's, it's not showing up on my side, but, but. Okay. Hey, hey. so verse, verse 24 says that the crown of the wise uh, is their riches, but the foolishness of fools mm -hmm. is folly. So the, it's, it's saying that the honor, the honor of the wise is their riches. The honor mm -hmm. of the wise is their riches. Um, mm -hmm. And as you just said, folly, folly has no benefits. Um, uh, Ecclesiastes 9 16 says that the poor man's wisdom is despised. Mm. The poor man's wisdom is despised, but the honor uh, uh, of the wise is their riches. It's, it's the crowning of, of their wisdom. You, it's, 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 their, it's their honor. It's what they're known by. It's, right. it's, their, it's their brand. Yes. You know them. By 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 how they speak, by how by how they handle folks with the way that they speak. So mm -hmm. so so it's so the honor of the wise is their riches. Mm. It's their crown. It is. It's who they are. It's their brand, like you said. It's so in, a, in other words, it, it's it, how you it know makes, them. Yeah, it's, it it makes a difference how you talk. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it makes does. a difference how you speak. Man. Mm. Yeah, jump, jump right back in, babe. Oh, okay. Um, no, I was going to say, you know, I said the crown, when a prince or a princess wears a crown, that makes you know who they are. Yes. So being wise um, makes you know, uh, makes other people know who you are. You don't have to say a word. You can just walk in the room and somebody yeah. say, oh, yeah, that's, you know, whoever, whatever your name is. Um, that Oh, yeah, I remember when she told me to do this. And I did it and it worked. Um, and only following a wise person's right. um, uh, following their instructions is what's going to help you get through whatever you're going through. If you don't follow, you're going to be like the foolish person. You're just going to do whatever you want to do anyway. Um, you know, yeah. when people come to you and ask you for advice and they go the opposite way. You know, I used to tell them, you know, you don't really want to hear the truth because you're not going to do it because we already talked about it already. Um, and that we already talked about how you should move, what you should do, and you're not following it. So you become the fool or the father, the person that's foolishness, that's right. foolish, 
uh, because right. you're following your own wisdom. Now you ask for wisdom, but then you don't follow it. So whatever comes after that, whatever repercussions come with that, then you're the one that has to pay for that. But that person right. that is crowned with wisdom is going, they're crowned with wisdom for a reason, just like Solomon was crowned with wisdom to lead the people of Israel. Um, even though he got off track and got into his own thing um, after a while, he asked God, I need, I can't do this on my own. You're going to have to show me how to lead these people. Um, mm -hmm. And he did that. God gave him wisdom. And so since he gave him wisdom, the people began to follow and believe him and believe God, believe what God was doing in his life. And that's what we right. should be. Uh, we should be those people, be that um, wise person that people want to follow our instructions and they get results from it. So yeah. crown, um, where the crown I, of the wise. Yeah, I see that uh, Tabitha Lowry is uh, on. And I just want to shout her out. Um, her Bible study showed up in my feed today. It, it was oh, amen. Her, it was her Tuesday night Bible study. She was teaching about brokenness. And Tabitha, I just wanted to let you know I enjoyed it so much. Amen. I really enjoyed. Amen. I really enjoyed Thanks your for teaching. Us tonight. And I also found found out that she does uh, praise dancing. Very, very anointed and very skilled. Amen. Uh, so, so, so after I saw her video and watched, uh, I'm guessing maybe about half of it, I clicked to go find out what else she had, and that's how I found out that she what oh, she's okay. a praise dancer. So Amen. I just want you to so shout know, out I really to enjoyed your your teaching on today. Amen. Shout out to Tabitha. Thank you for being on with us uh, tonight. Uh, thank you for watching uh, with us and being here. Hopefully that what we are saying, uh, we're walking through Proverbs, picking up some wisdom on tonight. Yeah. Um, like right. I said before, we're not just teaching this. We're picking up some wisdom. Also, um, we're in verse um, chapter 26. 14 and then we're on verse 25. 25 or 26? Oh, go ahead. If, you, if we're at 25, go right ahead. It says a true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. A true witness. You know, we talk about being a witness, um, a witness to people and not just saying it out of our mouth, but our actions are a witness also. Um, right. So we help and uh, bring them to God. We deliver them to the Lord. We say here, Lord, uh, they say, I want to be saved. We take them to the altar or we take them in the altar at the store or wherever we're, wherever you meet them at, you're the, you help them uh, become a disciple of Christ. You help them. So we should be a true witness. A true witness does not lie. A true witness does not try to trip up. A true witness does not try to um, oh make it about them. Uh, a true witness is a person that really is following God's uh, standards and guidelines and they do not do what they want to do. They follow him and if he says no don't say it don't do it then he does mm -hmm. it so that is a true witness true so if you're witness. witnessing true and you're seeing someone um that lives that lifestyle know that they're a true witness and it is easier for them to witness to others um and the, and others because others have watched and others come to them and say hey i want to be saved and we deliver them right to the lord's face just like you deliver a package and say lord they want to be saved accept them as your son right. or daughter so a true witness is somebody that's not fake, somebody that's not trying to do more than what they're supposed to do. They are uh, following God, a true witness. I can say um, that I've known true witnesses in my life um, because I've uh -huh. seen God work. I've seen God work through them. I've seen God work on their behalf. So a true witness, we want to, our goal is to be that true witness. It says, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. That's a person that, um, that takes and heaps praise on themselves. Um, that makes it about them. Um, they're either they tell you something, then they don't do it. So we don't want, we don't want to be that person. We want to be the right. true witness of true witness. Uh, God that we can help uh, have souls come to Him. Thank you, God. Talk so I'm going to go to verse 26. It says, <laughs> "In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, mm -hmm. and His children shall have a place of refuge." In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his My children God. shall have a place of refuge. Now, when you look at that word fear, it's not talking about that crouching in the corner kind of fear. It's talking about a reverential fear. Mm -hmm. It's talking about being in awe of who he is, mm -hmm. being in awe of his person, being in awe 
of where he has brought you from. Um, mm -hmm. And it's this kind of fear that gives me uh, the confidence to know that 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 in him, I can find refuge. Yes. That no matter what's going on, no matter who has walked away, no matter who has betrayed me, no matter who has lied on me, in you, him, God. I find the place of refuge. Mm. So, so when, life, when life has turned upside down, I have a place of refuge in him. Why? Because I reverence him. Why? Because I stand in awe of him. Hallelujah. And, and Thank you, God. This knowing that no matter who comes, what happens, no matter how dark it gets, no matter how thick life gets, I still know that I have a place of refuge and that he's not going to walk away. Uh, mm. He's not going to leave me uh, out there uh, uh, it, to, to be exposed in the elements by myself. Um, he's not going to uh, expose me. He's not going to put my business out there. In Thank him, Lord. in him, I have a place of refuge. I and have a place. He is not going to leave me out in the elements. Hallelujah. I have a place of refuge. Thank you, God. I find uh, Tabitha. She, I find refuge. That means when I'm when I don't feel the best, when I don't know which direction to go, He yeah. is my refuge. There's my a whole God. chapter in Psalms mm -hmm. that talks about Him being our refuge. My our God. refuge yes. is a, is where you are in safe. You're in a safe place. You're safe in a place, place. that does not. Um, has has walls and protection for you um mm. he will not allow anything to come in and get you and snatch you from him mm -hmm. um so you have refuge you run to him we run to everything else um a lot of times but if we run to him um he is our refuge he is our protection he is our strength he is the one that guards us uh when we feel weak when we feel like we can't move on he is our <laughs> refuge his children <laughs> have refuge thank you let me God. say this too verse 27 it says that the fear of the lord is a fountain of life it's a fountain mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. to depart from the snares of death the proper kind of fear reverential uh standing in awe of him the proper kind of fear it says it says that that it it it, the, it helps me to depart from the snares of death the proper kind of fear will lead to deliverance. Mm. The proper kind yeah. of fear will lead to me walking out of a situation that I know is not good for me. The proper yes. kind of fear gives me the strength to stand up and say, I'm done and no more. The proper yes. kind of fear gives me the strength, the courage to Thank walk you, away from an abusive relationship. It's this proper kind of fear that My brings Lord. about change in the life of the believer. It's My this Lord. kind of fear, this kind of reverence, this kind of awe that will cause an individual to put down drugs and alcohol, go go, to, go cold turkey without yes. going to rehab. It's this kind of fear. Yes. It's this yes. kind of fear. It's this kind of fear that makes the difference. Thank you, it's God. this kind of fear that brings me out. It's this kind of difference that causes me to change my mind. Mm. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank this you. The proper kind of fear makes all the difference. Amen. So we're talking about fear. We're talking about the respect of God. You know, yes. um, the respect of who he is and what he's mm -hmm. done and what you've experienced yeah. it's the respect of God. It's not, you know, because mama did it or whatever. It's the respect of God. It's respect because you've seen him do in others lives, what he is possibly, what he can do, not possibly do, oh but what oh he my. can do. So the respect of God, just like you have the respect of your parents, you respect them, you respect their rules and their guidelines. It's the respect of God is, what gets you as um apostle was saying to your deliverance in your deliverance out of the things that you are in and involved in the respect of god if you have the respect of god you won't turn back and go back if you have the mm. respect of god you will not say things and do things and act in certain ways and lie and judge if you have the respect of god um you will follow his guidelines and you will not stray for them uh just because a little hard time come in or something happens it's the respect of him and so um mm -hmm. 
uh, Proverbs 13 and 14 says, the law of the wise is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. So the respect mm -hmm. of God will turn you away from death. It'll turn mm -hmm. you away from those things that will deplete you, that will diminish who you are, that will make you think, well, God is not hearing me. The respect of God is what keeps you and maintains you. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Well, Thank we're, you, we're running out of we're running out of time. Um, did you want to uh, go to verse twenty eight? No, we'll come back next week. We're run, yeah, because we're running out of time. Uh, right. Why don't you go ahead and play us out, and uh, yeah, we'll come back next week and try to finish it up. Amen. So, God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for Proverbs. We thank you Glory for letting us God. walk through. Proverbs, picking up some wisdom. We hope Hallelujah. on tonight as this stream is being seen by the ones that are on live and the replay that they can grab something from this word that we, um, that you've used us to deliver, God. We stand out of the way while you are in the way, while you are showing the love that you have for us through your Glory. word. You want nothing but the best for us. And God, we Hallelujah. ask that you would uh, protect our gates, that you would show Show us what does not need to come in our gates, what needs to go out of our gates, God, yes, what needs to yes, come in our yes. life and not be in our life in those people, environments, places and things, mm. God. You show yes, us yes. Um, what we need to be doing. Uh, God, give us more wisdom. Just as Solomon prayed, we want the same thing in our lives. We want the crown of wisdom. We don't want to walk around foolishly. We don't want to do folly and silly things. We want to do your will. Replace our will for yours lord we love you and thank oh, you for your oh, sacrifice oh. your son on the cross without him we would not be walking through your word picking up any wisdom or any standard or any guideline we love you and thank you and until next time on friday night live at 9 p.m keep winning in prayer thank i you will god. see you next time god